Welcome everybody. We've got a uh, presentation today on winter maintenance checks. As you can see we brought in the CAT 420E backhoe. We're going to use that for demonstration purposes. A couple things to note before we get started. One, we went online, Caterpillar's website. We've got a checklist for a winter maintenance inspection. We're going to follow that checklist as we go through. If the things are okay, we will check them off the sort if they need work. And we'll put that on the sheet. What's important to notice before you start, we as a class did a good job cleaning everything up at the end of the semester. We did not prepare these for winter maintenance inspections. So, ideally you want to take a <coughs> pressure washer and steam clean all the grease. All the spots that have mud and stone caked in, you need to clean that up. Otherwise, you're going to miss something. You're going to not see something that needs attention. And so those two things going, we've got a checklist. We've steam cleaned the machine. We're ready to go. So we're going to move forward. We're going to start at the front of the machine, work our way to the back. First thing we got is the bucket. And some things that you check on the bucket. The very front we have a cutting edge. You're going to want to check every bolt, make sure they're not loose. These will loosen up on you. If they become loose, it'll start to wear the bottom of the bucket, the mall board. Next you want to check the cutting edge and make sure you have not weared it too thin. If you come and look on the side, Here's the side view of the cutting edge. Notice how thin it is in the front compared to the back. That cutting edge is designed to be flopped and you would have a new cutting edge once you flip it. If you wait too long and this wears out too far, it will not be strong enough and it won't hold up. It'll break. You cannot flip it. So if you wait too long to flip that cutting edge, it's going to cost you twice as much money because you've just lost half the life of that cutting edge. Our cutting edge looks to be okay. We need to keep an eye on it. It will definitely make the semester, but we will eventually be flopping that cutting edge over. If you're looking for any cracks in the bucket, any wear spots, pin spots, and ours all look good. Now we will move behind the bucket. So, Go ahead. Okay. On the back of the bucket, we're looking at all of our pins. All of our pins have retainers on them. We want to make sure that these retainers are in place. All the pins look good. All of your welds on the back side. No cracks, no breaks, nothing like that. Obviously, we have cylinder. Okay, so we want to make sure there's no burrs. Our cylinder looks dry. Our hoses are looking good. Okay. Uh, any of your main mask. We don't want to see any cracks, you know, breaks like that, a good uh, rule of thumb. Look at your paint. If you start to see paint cracking, we might have an issue there, okay? We also have grease fittings. Like Mr. Adams said, we're going to want to make sure those are all clean. But we need to grease those periodically, like we do throughout the, throughout the year. If you come over here, this is the mud that we're kind of talking about. You know, there's things in there that could possibly be that we can't see right now. But again, we didn't make this complete for an actual winter check. A couple other things to add while we're right here, Mr. Waters. Take a look at these hoses. Perfect example why you want to steam clean and get all this dirt and, and grease off of here. Uh, seniors, some of you were around when we changed one of these hoses on the, the backhoe. Full, filled right up with uh, grease and mud. Couldn't see them weather checked. We get rid of this, clean them up, we'll be able to tell if those hoses are going to last or if they need replacing. So we looked at the front of our bucket pretty good. Moving towards the side. Your winter maintenance checks 
is not pulling the wheels off and checking the brakes. And you're looking for wear items, safety factors. We leave these for the, the diesel techs. So here's another cylinder, a couple more pins to look at, and some hoses for the bucket. We got some on the other side, we'll check once we get around. We will get in the motor compartment a little bit later. Fuel, you want to check your cap. You want to make sure everything fits securely. You want to make sure the gasket is on that cap. Otherwise, it could leak fuel out. If you see fuel leaking out, it obviously will allow water to get in. You do not want that to happen to your tank. Any to add to this area, Mr. The other thing I would say is as you're doing your walk around, you can obviously look down underneath the machine, see if there's any pooling. If you see anything like that, that kind of gives you a heads up on what to look for down the road uh, as, you're, as you're performing your check. You know, obviously we don't see anything coming off the fuel tank, but right underneath you can see the floor is still dry. That's what we want to see. We don't want to see anything dripping off, causing any issues. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what would be next? Uh, we'll move towards the back just to add on to the what you brought up, Mr. Patrick. Is we want to check these wheel hubs as we're walking by. Yes. Backside, if you need to notice anything leaking, you need to write that down. We do not expect you to fix that, but we would expect you to notice a hub leaking. Same with the rear hub, it might require you to look behind the tire. If there's any oil residue laying in the bottom of the hub. We will get in the cab a little bit later. As we walk around, you want to look at the glass. All the glass looks to be good, no cracks. Anything that's cracked needs to be written up and should be replaced. One of the rear outriggers, you got a cylinder, you've got a few pins and a few hoses. Same scenario, you're looking for scorch, dig marks in the, in the shaft, you're looking for oil residue leaking, you're looking for a sloppy pin, you're looking for tin retainers, you're looking for kinks in the, in the steel lines, and you're looking for uh, chafing in the, uh, the flexible hose lines. Everything looks to be good here. Keepers are good. Outrigger pads seem to be in good shape. All the retainer pins, retainers are on. Now we move into the backhoe and the, of the machine. Same thing. Notice all, all of these hoses are just taped right full of just thick, dirty, grease, mud. We want to clean that so we can inspect all those hoses. Some of those hoses have uh, protectors over them. We want to remove the protectors so we can look at the hoses. Okay. This is what I mean by a protector. All right. It's got a cover over it, zip tied on. We have no idea how that hose looks under there. Now's the time to take it apart, slide that back and forth, move it around and check that hose out. You've got multiple uh, pins here. You've got cylinders. There's two cylinders, swing cylinders. There's a boom cylinder. Same scenario, you're checking for oily residue. The rod isn't scored, marked up. The reason why you don't want a rod that's all marked up, when that rod moves inside the cylinder, those, those uh, marks on the rod will destroy the gland and eventually that will be, be, need repair. Uh, moving back, we've still got more pins, bushings, retainers. We've got another cylinder. Same hoses you're looking at. Now, along with what Mr. Fitzpatrick said, you're still looking for, for crack paint or cracks themselves. You will notice a crack when you see it. This all looks like nice, smooth paint. If any of this weld had a crack in it, it would definitely show up in the paint. So you want to be looking for cracks as you're moving down through. 
as hole. you're go ahead, Mr. Packer. Oh. As you're servicing your extender hull, make sure that you follow the manufacturer's uh, suggestion as far as what they want. Some will take grease, some will do a graphite. Okay, you want to double check and make sure what you're supposed to put on there to make sure that that's not catching. All right. We're also going to keep an eye on our hoses back here. We have a whole other cylinder back here to look at. Um, again, looking for any bro break, broken uh, welds, cracks in the paint, lines look good. Got a little scoring, but nothing major. Uh, no leaks. All of our grease fittings are well lubricated. Okay. Back here on the bucket, same thing. Lots of pins, lots of retainers, lots of grease fittings. Our teeth. Our teeth need to be in good shape. They look good, they've got a good point on them. All of our pins are still in place for the teeth. Okay? Our bucket itself, good welds, not dented, not busted all apart, uh, no holes in it. All right? We do have our, our uh, pin, pin points where we can uh, pick things up, you know, lifting points. Uh, what am I missing, Mr. Adams? Oh, you know, we're doing good, I think. Notice the different style pin keepers. These are just powder pins. All in all, the machine is in pretty good shape, I would say. And we're just repeating the same thing on this side, looking at the same areas, looking at the cracks. Now, a reminder, it's not our job to fix the machine. We're just telling the owners what we found, and they will decide whether we're going to fix it now or fix it later if it, if it breaks. Uh, here's a good example of what we mean by a worn out hydraulic hose. Look how the protective outer sheet is getting dry rotted and breaking away. Eventually that hose will fail and need replaced. Now if this machine was keeping six guys busy eight hours a day, the owner might decide to change that hose. If that hose was a thousand dollars, the owner might say, let's see if we can get another couple months out of it. That's not our decision to make. Our, our priority is to tell them that hose is bad. Same with the outriggers on the other side, we've got the right side outriggers, everything looks to be intact, material hasn't destroyed anything, hoses are good, the cylinder on this side doesn't show any fluids leaking, outrigger themselves aren't smashed up the bent, don't see any noticeable cracks. Especially on this machine, we're going to want to make sure that our locking mechanism is in good working order. That's one thing we can check in the cab, but we want to make sure that there's nothing missing, nothing broke, right? Our cushions are in place. So that way, when we do travel down the road, we need to have this thing locked up. We don't want it to flop back down as we're going. No fluid leaking on the inner side of the wheel. Front wheel looks good, no leaks. We've got more pins and bushings for the front arms. Hoses all look good. And then we're back up to the front of the bucket. That's your quick walk around looking at floor space as, you, as we walk. We're not climbing on or anything. We're not doing anything. We will move into that section next.